सो हेलो हाई वेलकम टू एपिसोड नंबर फाइव फ्रॉम लास्ट फोर वीडियो वी हैव लर्न मेनी कॉन्सेप्ट एंड यू प्रोबली हैव वन क्वेश्चन दैट वी आर लर्निंग ऑल द कॉन्सेप्ट बट इफ वी कॉन्ट एक्सप्रेस दैम और इफ द इंटरव्यूअर डोंट आस्क दैम अबाउट दोज क्वेश्चन देन प्रोबली इट्स ऑफ नो यूज राइट बट वन थिंग यू बी श्योर दैट द थिंग्स आई एम डिस्कसिंग हेयर दे आर प्रिटी कॉमन लाइक एवरी इंटरव्यूअर टेन टू आस्क ऑल दोज क्वेश्चन so wish you are if your interviewer don't ask those question or the question in so much detail then you can use the trick i'll be telling you in today's video by which you can let your interviewer know that you know many thing and many deep thing than other candidates so in this video i'm going to take a very trending question and yet a very deep question and probably sometime interviewer tend to ignore this question because they think that the student probably don't have so much depth but if you can answer this question in the depth i'll be explaining you today then i guarantee you you will be the next philosophy engineer or any interview would be a cake walk for you so what's the question see cmos inverter is very much popular we know and if they tell you okay cmos inverter is so much popular but why it is so much popular there are some common answer like it's uh, it dissipate very less power and yeah we will discuss about power in our later videos then you can tell them about noise but those are common but like everybody know anybody who is prepared for inverter cmos inverter then know about those things but there is a very good answer and that is a practical answer like if you only if you know the things how practically wield then only you can give that answer and that is the robustness of the cmos inverter so anytime your interviewer will ask you about why cmos inverter is so much popular then you can answer about those thing like it is power like power noise those thing but with that you can add today's answer so before i start please like this video because you know tutorial videos are having very less views but it take a lot of effort from my side so to appreciate me and to motivate me to continue making such videos please like this video and let's get started so today's video is very much dependent on our episode number 4 so if you haven't seen episode number 4 please go there watch it and then come to this episode number 5 so what gonna we answer today and that is we have our vtc of inverter if it is this is your v in and you have your v out and there is a location roughly when this transition is happening from high voltage to low voltage right and we ended our last video by saying that we want our vm that transition point or the trip point to be exactly at the middle of our high value which is vdd and of our low value which is ground zero voltage but that is the ideal condition but if we have some non linearity in our input signal or something which we discuss in the last part of our episode number 4 then we try to make this transition point little up or little down depending on the situation and your interviewer could ask you that if you want to push your bm or the trip point or the transition point up then how you will design your cmos inverter is it you will make your pmos bigger than nmos or the opposite and vice versa so that is the main question we going to deal with it today and when we will get this answer with that we will get to know one of the great thing about cmos inverter and that is the robustness of it because whenever we fabricate our cmos inverter or anything actually any logic thing in the wafer and wafer are tending to like 12 inch or something they are very big right and nobody can guarantee you that if you take your w by l or your w probably 12 micron and l probably 5 nanometer then after you manufacture it it will come exactly like this there could be some variation so if i have a inverter here then probably i wanted to make my wp by wn something for example 3 but due to some non idility in the fabrication unit and which is practically happening every day you can't say that i have designed it for this and i received something else and as a designer we need to have some margin of error like if the error is there then we should have some margin so that our design won't fail and 
here lies the great feature of CMOS inverter and that is I will discuss little later let me get this answer first and with that I will reveal that answer to you. So, before we go to that let me just quickly revise you what we had in our last video and that is uh, this is simple uh, this is simple your CMOS inverter right uh, your YOLO one is your PMOS and just and for your PMOS these are your VGSP and VDSP. How I got this thing in episode number 3 I have derived those thing and this is very easy you can get it and these are for my NMOS and why I am concerned about VGS and VDS because in the current for the PMOS and for the NMOS I need these voltages right. Now after you are clear with this thing if you are not pause it see it try to derive this thing like no not <laughs> current equation current equation is there you can't derive it now it will take time but this thing VGSP and I hope you already know this thing from the last lecture after that let me do one thing case 1 and the case 1 is that your PMOS is bigger we have this thing W P by W n equal to 2 this is the minimum requirement we need to have for a half way transition point but for example what we do did we just increase the size of WP or the size of PMOS ok. Then what will happen see if you closely see the current equation here you will see the W is directly proportional to the current. So, if I increase the size of PMOS then PMOS can accommodate more current and reverse is also true. So, now if I increase the size of my PMOS which will imply that for the same voltages for same VDS voltages same VGSP voltages I could have more current perfect. But if you just concentrate on this circuit then you can see the current through your PMOS and the current through your NMOS are same it is not like that if current like if your PMOS can accommodate more current then it can without the dependency of NMOS because if PMOS drive more current then that current should go through your NMOS also that means your NMOS also need to be capable of driving such or that much of current right and probably this won't gonna happen because voltages are the same these voltages are the same we have not touched them we only touch the size of PMOS. So, now what is the situation your PMOS can accommodate more current for the same voltage but your NMOS can not accommodate that because NMOS is as it is we are not touching it. So, that means one thing is clear and that is current through your PMOS and current through your NMOS would be equal but my PMOS can accommodate more current in the virtue of its size. So, that means at that time your PMOS or your circuit will modulate its own voltages. Little while I said voltages are not been touched and that is absolutely correct V in is in our hand we have provided V in. So, we will not be touching V in, but V out is not in our hand right V out is a result of some operation of PMOS and some operation of NMOS that means circuit have the full control over V out and the exact same time as PMOS now can handle more current because of larger W it will reduce its VDS because this is somewhat constant because just remember your VGSP is V in and VDD they are constant V in we have provided and VDD is already decided. So, the only variable which this circuit can touch yeah circuit can touch it is your VDSP and VDSP is this and you can see here VDD is again constant only we have V out just wait for me and let me draw the curve here and this probably the nominal curve or the curve in the last lecture we were drawing and there we were saying that yeah our VM is at the mid. But now what is happening one interesting thing is happening and that is our PMOS got a bigger W and I have said that we it can modulate your VDS and how it want to modulate it, it VDS it want to reduce its VDS. 
why it want to reduce, reduce its VDS because your VDS is directly proportional to your IDP and because of W IDP is already higher but my NMOS can't accommodate that much of current so that means I or the PMOS need to reduce the current and only by reducing its own VDSP or the voltage between its drain and source it can reduce the current flow inside it and you can see from here your VDSP is V out minus VDD. VDD again can't touch but we can touch V out right. So that means if we are here with W by P by W by N equal to 2 last video then whenever we are increasing our size of PMOS then probably for the same V in this is the V in we need to have a lesser V out. Why lesser V out? Because I want to reduce my VDSP. So let lesser V out means our V out will increase. Again confusion why V out increase? Let me give you some number here. So our VDD for example it is 2.5 and earlier we are getting 1.25. So now to reduce our VDSP we need to increase this fellow right. So that's why for the same V in probably we will get something here the V out. So that means this curve will come here and then it will get the transition point. So that means with the increase PMOS size our transition point can move up. So in yesterday's video I have shown you one of the input and that input was like this okay and we said this is our VM. So to get a correct output we need to push our VM up and pushing our VM out imply make your PMOS little bit larger right and you can easily simulate this thing in your EDA tool just make one sim uh, inverter for the ratio of 2 uh, and then increase it to 5 then increase it to 10 and you just see the VTC and it will be clean and clear. Same thing you can analyze and that is how to get this VM below this mid range like here I want to get it here and we can do it by increasing our size of NMOS because if I increase the size of NMOS without touching my PMOS NMOS can have more current but PMOS are not supplying the same amount of current so that means to satisfy our equation our NMOS need to reduce its voltage around VDSN and VDSN imply V out so V out need to reduce so that means we can probably will come here and we will get a modified graph which will look like this. So in the bookish language we say a good PMOS means imply the bigger PMOS so for a good PMOS will have the blue curve and for a good NMOS and a red PMOS will have this yellow curve and for nominal thing means when it is 2 W by P by W by N then this is a red curve this is the nominal or the normal operation. So now I will be revealing the answer which will help you to know that why CMOS inverter is so much popular. There are many other reasons I said but this is one of the reasons which we generally ignore and that is the robustness of your CMOS inverter to the size of PMOS and NMOS. Here you can see we are having some variation but in real life this variation is very small and that's why if you are want to design a CMOS inverter for WP by WN for 2 but due to fabrication non-idility it become 3 or it become 3.5 4 or 5 something like this like or it become less than one, uh, 2 also then also the operation of your inverter will look like an inverter only with minor here and there modification okay and these things are proved with this graph if you remember in our last lecture we have taken this graph and they are in here they have simulated that this x axis is your WP by WN and it is a log scale so that's why you can see this variation but if it is a linear scale then probably in the range of 2 to 4 or 5 you can see the your VM or the transition point 
exactly flat or the some modification so from this you can say like if your inter interviewer ask you then you can directly jump to this answer like CMOS is not so sensitive to the non-ideality of the fabrication and if we fabricate a CMOS for WIP by WIN2 and it turn out to be 3 or 4 then also the characteristic of CMOS or the VTC of CMOS remain nearly same and after this answer only your interviewer will directly jump to like why it is same then explain this thing explain that then you can bring out all the knowledge we have gained from lecture 1 to lecture 5 and this will be a very interesting discussion with your interviewer I hope so for today my task is done but you have a task and that is comment down below write something let me know that you are here and also I hope I deserve at least 50 like in this video and in our next video I'll be taking one question which will be important if we are applying for any mixed signal till then keep learning and tata bye bye